question. What kind of bear is best? And you may be thinking, that's a ridiculous question. Or you may be thinking, brown bear. But that's false. It's actually Syrian bear. More specifically, Syrian bear that fights Nazis. Hey friends, welcome back to History Savvy. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at a story about a bear who fought alongside Polish soldiers during World War II. Uh, this story was referred to me or recommended to me by one of my viewers. And though this viewer didn't point out a specific video, I picked this video based on the fact that it was popular and it's from a channel that I haven't ever seen before. The channel is called Infographics. So without further ado, let's get into it. While researching this video, we writers here at the Infographics Institute got kinda jealous. The Big Boss doesn't allow us to keep action figures, potted plants, or anything else in our pods, let alone have a cool office mascot. Also, the Big Boss stocks the bathroom with nearly see-through one-ply toilet paper. But that's a tale for another day. That seems like a cry for help. Corporal Wojtek was perhaps the coolest mascot one could wish for. Wojtek was a six foot tall, 500 or so pound brown bear that fought alongside Polish soldiers during World War II. In April of 1942, a group of Polish people. Wait, how tall was he? Hold on. That fought alongside Polish soldiers during World War II. Pounds. In April of 1942, a group of Polish POWs newly released from a Siberian gulag were traveling by train throughout the Iranian mountains. They were headed to join the British allies in the Middle East during a stopover in Hamadan, Iran. Some soldiers shared food with a young Kurdish boy who had a large sack. The soldiers noted. So let's talk about why the Polish, these Polish soldiers were in Soviet. Uh, gulags to begin with. And that's because uh, the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany invaded Poland and partitioned it and divided it among themselves. And so these Polish soldiers were in involved in that invasion of their homeland by the Soviets, captured by the Soviets, and sent to a prison camp. When the Nazis then turned against the Soviets and invaded the Soviet Union, uh, these Polish soldiers were magically now uh, allies of the Soviet Union against. Nazi Germany. So they were released from the Gulag and then they were transported south to the Middle East. Notice that the sack was moving and the child showed off his fine. He had a scrawny little Syrian brown bear cub. He found it abandoned and thought that his mother had been shot by hunters. The soldiers pulled together so happy. their meager resources so that Lieutenant Anatol Tarnowiecki could trade the boy for the bear cub. Reportedly, the bear was swapped for a chocolate bar, a Swiss army knife, a can of corned beef, and some other canned goods. Lieutenant Tarnowiecki kept the bear for a few months, eventually donating him to the soldiers of the 22nd Artillery Supply Company. The soldiers named the bear Wojtek, or Happy Warrior. They babied the cub, turning vodka bottles into impromptu baby bear bottles and feeding him condensed milk. As he grew, he was also fed fruit, marmalade, honey syrup, and beer as a treat. Wojtek quickly adapted to camp life. He wrestled with the soldiers, gathered around the campfire with them at night, and slept in their tents. The soldiers taught him to salute. He liked chasing down and eating the oranges the soldiers threw for grenade practice. Seeing how docile Wojtek was and the morale boost he brought to the soldiers, officers didn't mind having him around. He became the unofficial mascot of the company. Interacting with the bear was a pleasant distraction for the homesick soldiers. So it sounds like they're treating Wojtek here much like they would a dog. And I'm sure because Syrian brown bears are not big in terms of bear sizes, he was not much bigger than a dog at this point in his life. And so, yeah, it, it makes sense that they guess they would treat him like a dog. Some of whom were barely more than boys. As Wojtek grew bigger and stronger, the soldiers would wrestle him two and three at a time. Sometimes they'd play tug of war. Wojtek also made friends with other animals in the camp, including a Dalmatian belonging to a British liaison officer. The bear and the dog would spend hours chasing and play fighting each other. The soldiers taught Wojtek to pick up men by their boots and dangle them upside down. It was a great way to haze unsuspecting rookies who thought they were going to get eaten by a bear. Wojtek <laughs> so if Wojtek managed to be six feet in height, as they pointed out at the very beginning of the video, it seems unlikely to me that Wojtek would have been able to hoist men by their ankles and hoist and hold them up. You know, I mean, the average height for men at this time, I'm 
I'm assuming was five seven or above. So I I I'm skeptical of that claim there. Copied much of the behavior he saw around him. He learned to stand on his hind legs and march along with the soldiers. He became skilled at drinking beer from a bottle. Also, he liked to eat lit cigarettes. He'd hold his mouth open for the cigarettes to be placed in, take a puff, and then swallow it. Some claim that he would only accept cigarettes if they were lit and turn up his nose at unlit ones. Sure, today we'd call this animal abuse, but the soldiers loved the bear, and it was a different time. <laughs> okay. It certainly was a different time, and any time there is a war, that makes the times extraordinary as a lot of the uh, social norms get thrown out the window and uh, new norms are created, especially among soldiers. But I, again, I'm a little skeptical that a bear would be willing to eat lit cigarettes. I mean, what creature, whether human or animal, would be okay with something burning being placed in their mouth? So, I, I mean, I believe he ate cigarettes, but I doubt that they were lit cigarettes. I think that, I mean, my first thought is that the, the fact that they were lit cigarettes is a myth created to show the strength of this bear, kind of give him some more masculine traits. Apparently, Wojtek was a fan of coffee, too. Along with the 22nd Company, Wojtek was stationed in Iraq, Syria, and then Palestine, and eventually Egypt. The bear had a reputation for being mischievous and getting into all sorts of things. At an allied As a forces bear camp in Iraq, would, to know. the horror of some terrified women, Wojtek stole ladies' underwear off a clothesline. On Christmas Eve, after a... Which women? You know, I... I I'm not a scholar of Middle Eastern social history, but I somehow don't think that it was common for Muslim women to be hanging out their underwear in public, especially where a bear might get at them. So if that story is to be true, it's probably they're on a base somewhere where there are white women who've hung out their, say nurses, for example, who've hung out their underwear on a line. A traditional Polish feast where he and many of the other soldiers really enjoyed the wine, a drunken Wojtek broke into a camp storeroom. He trashed the room, spilling cooking oil and flour while looking for jam and other sweets. Wojtek <laughs> also figured out how to get into the communal showers and... You know, typical bear activity, bust into a cabin or a tent or a cooler and, you know, get out the sweets. But that must have been an enormous amount of wine for a bear to get drunk on. And I assume it wouldn't be good wine as uh, I, I don't drink wine. I don't drink alcohol. But I can't imagine good wine being given to a bear. And turn on the taps. Unfortunately, he was really bad at rationing water, which was a precious commodity in the Middle East. Sometimes the shower loving bear would cause water shortages. The army took to keeping the bathhouse door locked. Wojtek would hang around outside in hopes of getting in. One day in June of 1943, Wojtek noticed the bathhouse door had been left unlocked and ambled in. An Arab spy on a reconnaissance mission had hidden in the showers and was now face to face with the bear. The spy's screams of terror alerted the camp guards, who quickly took the man into custody. The spy was so afraid of Wojtek that he blabbed various secrets, including news of an impending raid, which the army then moved quickly to foil. As a result, Wojtek received sweetmeats, beer, and was allowed to take an extra long shower. <laughs> I mean, that that story too seems a bit too incredible. I mean, <laughs> that must have been the world's worst spy to have been thwarted by a bear only interested in taking a shower, you know, and then the vague threat thereafter that he might be eaten by a bear to just spill all his guts. <laughs> that sounds like you know, a silly sitcom. That, that's like Hogan's Heroes type stuff. That's That doesn't sound like reality. Of course, it, there's probably some truth to that, but yeah, world's worst spy thwarted by Wojtek the Bear. In 1944, the Polish Corps shipped out from Alexandria, Egypt, heading to Naples, Italy, to fight alongside the British 8th Army. Unfortunately, the British ship the soldiers were to travel on had rules against allowing mascot and pet animals aboard. The 22nd Company got around the regulations by enlisting Wojtek in the army. 
he was given the rank of private and had his own paybook and serial number. During the brutal Battle of Monte Cassino, Wojtek watched soldiers carry 100-pound crates of 25-pound artillery shells from the supply trucks to the front line. The bear quickly began copying the soldiers, standing upright and carrying boxes that would usually require multiple men to move. However, sometimes Wojtek was lazy and carried empty crates. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I can believe that Wojtek was involved in carrying ammunition, but I am skeptical of the claim that he saw soldiers carrying ammunition and of his own will and volition decided to carry ammunition too. I think it's more likely that the soldiers employed him in that function, and I would assume that he probably carried it on his back as... I uh, I don't think bears can amble over long stretches of terrain, probably rough terrain, I don't know, but long stretches of terrain in any event on their hind legs, you know, they they don't, I, I've never seen, a, I've seen bears in the forest and I've never seen a bear just wandering around on two legs. So what it boils down to is I believe the bear actually did haul ammunition, but I don't believe that it happened in the way it's being portrayed here. I might be wrong, but I would want to examine some sources. The Allies won the difficult battle and Wojtek's actions earned him a promotion to the rank of corporal. Also due to his popularity, a depiction of a bear carrying an artillery shell was adopted as the official emblem of the 22nd Company. It's a the pretty cool emblem. emblem. Was put on vehicles, flags, pins, and uniforms. Once World War II I personally think this a successful emblem for any military unit is something that's simple um, but has an element of coolness in it. And you can't deny that a bear carrying an, an artillery shell like that just looks cool. ended in 1945, the 22nd Company, including Wojtek, were stationed at Winifred Airfield on Sunwick Farm in Scotland. Wojtek became popular with the locals, especially with the children and the press. In 1947, the Polish army demobilized and most of the soldiers returned home to Poland. They were heartbroken to say goodbye to Wojtek. The bear was sent to the Edinburgh Zoo. At first, the zoo decided to introduce him to the other bears, but it didn't work. Wojtek thought he was a human. As a result, he was given his own exhibit. Sometimes, <laughs> I don't think that he thought he was human, uh, but there's really no way we can evaluate that claim as, I mean, we can't evaluate what's in the mind of an animal. Wojtek's former comrades not would come to visit him. They'd hop the fence to his area and wrestle or cuddle with him. They'd also bring him beer and throw him lit cigarettes. The zookeepers noticed that Wojtek perked up whenever he heard Polish being spoken. Wojtek lived out the rest of his days at the zoo, passing away in 1963 at the age of 22. Both Edinburgh and Krakow have monuments featuring sculptures of Wojtek. The Imperial War and Sikorsky Museums in London also have memorials. And now that you've reached the end, so, yeah, I guess by my skepticism, I've probably offended some um, Polish people who've watched this video, and I'm sorry I didn't mean to offend, uh, and I, I believe this story to be largely true, just some elements of it, I think, have been embellished. And that's something that's not unique to Wojciech the Bear. Um, there's a video that I did in my other channel on Zeitgeist History covering old Abe the Eagle, who was a, a mascot for a Union company during the American Civil War. And there's one story that says Abe, in a battle with Confederate soldiers, had his tie severed by a bullet, and he soared over the battle lines in this magnificent display of Union American patriotism. And that story's been, been debunked. You know, that was a fabrication of uh, propaganda from northern newspapers. It's a great story, it's just not true. And the truth of Old Abe and the truth of Wojciech the Bear is, is interesting in and of itself. Um, I think the real story here is how animals were brought in to world wars and other wars. Um, you know, horses obviously have played a big part in human wars, but there's these mascots. And the way humans interact with these mascots is, I think, interesting and worth examining deeper. So I'll link to that video of Old Abe if you want to look at that. All in all, I like this video, but I think some parts were a little bit too embellished. I'll have to check out other the infographic show videos 
and uh, do some evaluations on them. But I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found this video bearable, and I'll catch you in the next one.